Hi there, in this video, we're gonna create a very simple CSS3 animation. I essentially want to fade in this title. So when the user navigates to our web page, the title will fade in from an opacity zero to an opacity one. It's supposed to be a very gentle introduction to keyframe animation inside of CSS3. So here we have a very standard HTML document. It contains the HTML tag, the head tag, and the body tag. Inside of the body tag, we have a H1 with the class of animated. Let's add some styles inside of our head tag. Now, I would advise that you put this in a separate file inside of your application. This is just for demonstration purposes. And the first thing that we need to do is define a keyframe. So what we're doing when we're defining a keyframe is defining the different stages of animation that our project will go through. So in this stage, we can say at keyframes, and then we need to give a name to this particular keyframes. And this keyframe will be fade in. This allows us to fade something from a particular value to a particular value. So it's as simple as saying from opacity zero to opacity one. Now it's very declarative. We're essentially saying that we want to go from not being able to see this item at all to actually seeing it on screen. We don't have to define durations or anything like that at this point. All we have to do now is either target our H1 directly or alternatively, put dot animated for our class. In this circumstance, either one is fine. And then inside of our animated class, what we want to do is say the animation name, that's the name of the animation that we'll be using. And of course that name is fade in. And the duration of our animation can be three seconds. And you will find that it is as simple as that. We already have the class here on our H1 and all we're stating is that we want to go from opacity zero to opacity one. If we refresh our web page, we can see that it fades in from zero to one over that three second duration. So this is cool, we've gone from a value to a value, but we can also do things at particular set percentages. For example, here in our fade in, we can make a new animation, and this one will be keyframes, and we'll call this one cycle color. And at 0%, we will say the color of our text will be black. At 25%, we can add the color of the text to be blue. At 50%, we can change that to be red. At 75%, we can change that color to instead be something like blue violet. And at 100%, we can set our color to be something like coral. So what we're doing now is cycling through those different colors and the different percentages of our animation. So instead of saying that we want to use the animated name of fade in, we can say that instead we want to use the cycle color. If we refresh our page, we can see that we go from those different colors over from black all the way to blue, coral and so on. We did find that that was quite quick. So let's change that to instead be six seconds. And as you can see, we have this very slower animated text now, which cycles through the different colors. What if we wanted to display this twice? Well, we certainly could. Let's change that to have an animation iteration count. And we can change that to be two. Also going to change the duration to be three seconds. So we should have a very similar functionality of that six second animation as it should iterate over this twice. So let's refresh this. We see it go through until it hits the coral in which it goes black and through to the coral once more. But what if we wanted our animation to instead run forever? Well, we certainly could. We could change this from two to instead be infinite. And when we refresh our page, we can see that our animation just continues to cycle through infinitely. We also have some fun things like changing the animation direction. Animation direction can be set to reverse. And what that will do is take it from coral to blue violet, 
then red, then blue, then black. If we save this, you can see it does go from that coral all the way to the black, and it will continue to cycle as we set this to be infinite. The fun does not stop there though, because we can also change the animation direction to be alternate. Now, alternate initially plays in the normal direction, so that runs first forward, then backwards, then forward, and so on. You can also do the same for that instead to be alternate reverse, which starts off backwards, then forward, etc. If we wanted to change the way in which our timing works, we could set an animation timing function, and that function can be different things like ease in, and that can also be things like ease in out, it can be linear, and so on. Things like ease in give us a slow start, ease out give us a slow end, ease in and out give us a slow start and a slow end, a linear speed gives us the same speed throughout the animation, and if we set this to ease, what this does is we have a slow start, then it goes fast and ends slowly. This is the default animation. And if you really want, you can define your own with a cubic bezier. This can essentially be done by passing four values like this. As well as that, we don't have to define these individually. What we can do is remove this, and we could make a similar function, but instead say animation, and we can pass in the current name, which would be cycle color. Then we need to pass in the duration, so for example, five seconds. We could also set the timing function, which would be something like ease in. We also didn't lock at this, but we can also set a delay, and this delay will be prior to the animation starting itself. If we wanted to do that, we could say animation dash delay, and potentially set that to something like two seconds. But we will add the two second delay inside of our animation declaration here. After that, we need to define how much we want to iterate this for, so we could go back to using infinite. And finally, we can also set a direction. So let's set this one to alternate. So as you can see here, we'll set an animation name with the shorthand syntax, which is the cycle color, the duration, which is currently five seconds, the timing function, which is currently ease in, the delay at two seconds, the iteration count, which is infinite, and the direction, which is alternate. If we save this, you can see that we have that animation. It was initially delayed by two seconds, and then it cycles through the different colors. So I hope this provides you with a decent introduction, at least to CSS3 animations. I should also add that you're not restricted to only using the one rule. We could also add something here, like a background color, of something like yellow, and maybe the blue could have a background color of something like red, and so on. If we then refresh this, you can see that we have that different color background color, as well as the different color text as the animation cycles through. So I hope you found this guide on CSS3 animations useful. If you have, let me know what you think inside of the comments section below. Don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io for more courses, free content, and much more. I also have a Patreon if you want to support the content. Check that out inside of the description. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very soon in that next video.